You're right. <laughs> As in. Oh, 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 hello. Hello there. Hello there. I guess so. I, guess I mean, at accurate. some at one point, I feel like we were talking over the count and not knowing that we were actually broadcasting, but I didn't know how accurate the count is these days because I had some salacious stuff to say that I'll just text you instead. Presented by Corona. Great. Great content. <laughs> content david dennis you may choose to co-sign it sight unseen if you'd like yeah i would i would like to uh just read the text on the air we'll just read text on, on the air and see what happens nothing nothing bad could happen when, that, when we do that honestly so, after surviving yesterday's show i'm pretty sure this show is unkillable so do your sur- worst dominate surviving yesterday's show i i think we thrived yesterday's show it wasn't a survive we evolved yesterday's See, show seeing seeing david just reminds me that steph curry is hosting the espies and i have my fingers crossed i i hope he finds a way to roast me at <laughs> oh, some can point we, this is uh, you know what i'm, we should, I'm gonna ride this train we need to start here david can we just engineer an actual feud we're unclear as to whether steph or merely his social media people are using dominique's uh-huh. name image and likeness um to promote his own empire and therefore bring down dominique's although it seems to be having the opposite effect honestly if you just listen to how he's been carrying himself over the last two months oh yeah yeah i'm, I'm actually wearing a, a wrestling shirt wwe shirt so i am uh i know about manufactured fumes uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we can, we can make this happen let's do it let's cut you gotta cut a good promo you gotta wait, wait we, 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 we i've cut so many good promos guys yeah like, that's the, the, the problem my promos is, is are that... even translate to people who don't speak english like these are <laughs> yeah. great promos they're international right. promos all you need to know literal sign language promos <laughs> Can we... Yeah, I think I yeah. I no. think one of the issues is that there was there was a lot of you, you obscured your face and so there was yeah. a lot of uh you know dividing this between you and Ryan Clark and oh uh, yeah, white know. people. Right. <laughs> there was they a all lot look of alike. Yeah, there was a, yeah, there was a lot of it. that going on. So it was, you know, we gotta we gotta fix that I, first. I, I think the real problem is that Dominique Dominique, for all of his attempts, hasn't actually triggered Steph enough yet. And I feel like Mm -hmm. what David and Mm -hmm. you and Dominique need to do is figure out how Dominique can actually genuinely infuriate your friend Steph Curry. Like, what can he do to actually get under his skin such that we move from kayfabe to actual, oh, I just goddamn hate this dude. No, I I want manufactured feud. I don't actually want to be scared of- I want grass-fed beef. I want organic, real shit. Yeah, I don't want to actually have to look over over my shoulder when I'm in California. <laughs> I think I think I think this track. I think you got to yeah. start with the oh. track. I think it's got to be something. He's in the studio way. already. You, oh, yeah, you got the studio yeah. going. All right, I'll write some you got bars. The TikTok for you. trend with the with the lights going in the background. You <laughs> yep. need some. You need to you know get plug, a ghost writer on there. Plug yeah. the word curry into rhymingdictionary.com, Alabaster. Oh. See what happens. See yes. what happens. So yes. I actually have a, a just Burry? a rapid fire off the top. What are the chances? Burry. Just just for David. Uh-huh. What are the chances so, that Stephen Curry has any idea what Dominique Foxworth's name is? I, you know what? I would actually say hundred percent attention to this stuff. I think he pays attention to this. Hundred mm. percent. So, so, oh, a one. I don't know zero, if he know, I don't know if he knows his name, but he knows. He probably knows the 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 circle guy. So I, I <laughs> circle I, face, I, circle faced guy. <laughs> <laughs> I I know Steph from before all of this. Like he was on the exec uh, committee, so he may not have known my name because oh, in a lot of the right. meetings he was watching golf on his phone. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was in um, yes, the executive committee throw meetings. The beef, there we go. Throw um, the there we go. There we go. We're getting ready for CBA <laughs> negotiations, <laughs> and you watching golf on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's hey, always hey, such hey, a good look to hey. be like he knows me. <laughs> Davidson scholars know how to multitask. He was probably locked in while watching. You're probably right. It was too slow for him. Yeah, (laughs) you guys weren't. Guys weren't using, you know, using big enough words. I think probably. Mm. Uh, Where does Davidson rank? Let's look this up while while Alabaster gets us started. What kind of scholars? First question, Davidson. Guys, we had tier scholars. (laughs) Top tier. Top tier, sir. The tier. Who can say how many schools are in the tier? But it is at the top. It is a top. Guys, come on. <laughs> I'm there. I, I am graduate. 
Come on. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Alabaster has yeah. been trying to start the show for a while. Um, I don't really give a shit about that. But... <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to start it anyway. Okay. And my question for you is, there was an NBA power move yesterday. DeAndre Ayton signed an offer sheet with the Pacers, there was momentary hysteria of, are the Suns going to match? Are they not going to match? What does this mean? They did match. And my question for you is, where does that leave Aiton, the Suns, and Kevin Durant? Um, DeAndre Aiton, like, is living one of the funnier NBA existences right now. And usually we talk about this using relationship metaphors, Dominique. Like, oh, is this like a breakup, blah, blah, blah? Is it a divorce? Like, what, what's happening here? I don't think there's an appropriate way to build an analogy for a restricted free agency, because what it means is, hey, if your employer wants to keep you, they can. If they don't, you can go look around the block for another partner. And let's say you find that partner and it's in Indiana and they're going to yeah. give you a max contract for $133 million over four years. You're sort of like a uh, employer that has disrespected you to the point where they're like, go check out the open market. They can then say, you know what? At that price, yeah, you're, you're, you're going nowhere. Stay here. You're with me, baby. And that's to <laughs> me it? like infuriating on DeAndre Aiden's behalf. Isn't marriage kind of a restricted free agency when you think about it a little bit? Um, love it depends on how restricted it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just seems, seems so you like get a to lot of work. Hold on. As a married man, I don't get to routinely check out the offers on the market. Yeah, I'm... Bring it back to my wife and be like, so I'm getting this this offer sheet. <laughs> um, thoughts? <laughs> I, I was going to I was gonna say that it was more like relationships in the feudal age, but I don't know. David Dennis got something got something going on that I don't want to, that I don't really know well, about. I mean, and I'm, you know, I'm interested. You know, when I, Let me know. You know, I, you know when when I when I go out in the streets and I come back home and I say you know I, I tell my wife hey I got get on she just generally goes oh, God it's good for you I'm sure you did you you you're so good looking <laughs> but, but, and then she just tells me all the thirty times you got hit on before lunch that that day and then but David, and then, David. I just, then it's then it's restricted because I'm like oh let me just let me just uh shut up and just be happy what you just said there Dominique what David just described his life to be like is literally what happened to DeAndre Aiden. <laughs> he was like, I got offers. And they, they were like, go prove it. Prove it's that you got offers. Out. It's not. It's Knock not. It's not because DeAndre Ayton was going to go to Indy. Uh, David was not. <laughs> if, if this was the same situation, then David would go to Indy and, and his wife would sign a contract with Kevin Durant. Like, you know what? I'm good. Let, let's, let me upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> it is not at all like a relationship analogy. Y'all need to stop this before you get David in trouble. So what? I have a healthy fear of the free of the free agency yeah, market. I think that's, so I'm, uh, that's, the, that's the difference between the relationship is like, we don't ever actually, we sign the extension well before we hit free agency. Cause don't nobody really want to test the market like that. Like I, I got a good setup. I like what no. I got going on. Of course things aren't perfect, but you know what? I, I, I'm not trying to figure out what that franchise tag life is like. I also am not trying to figure out, try to find a new place in Indianapolis. I'm good. I've been there. No, it is. It is futile. It is futile. And now feuding, I think both of those things are accurate about what's about to happen, because the upside of all of this is that January 15th, thank you, is the date at which DeAndre Aiden can be traded. He can't be traded for a full year without his consent now. So what this does is basically just move all of the drama between a guy, now a max player, a former number one overall pick and his employer. Um, it just moves it into the future. Like we're just going to have this for a longer time period now where it's like, well, is he going to be traded? Probably, but just not for right now. So the sun, but they, they, oh, go ahead. I mean, they could have done this a year ago and not, and not had the game seven fight that had them, you know, was part of them getting blown out by 40 points to the Dallas Mavericks. Like they could have done this a year ago and then been in a position to trade him possibly, you know, for Kevin Durant. Well, now you know like well there's the here's the, here's the difference though here's the difference though right like the suns only wanted to go four years right, for deandre right. aiden um they could have offered five Aiden wanted mm -hmm. five the pacers gave him four they could not offer five so the suns were like well now that you got a four-year deal that's kind of what we wanted and deandre aiden's like i i hate all of you 
<laughs> yeah, it seems like that was the point. The point was, right. uh, I mean, it's a risky game to play because teams can put like a poison pill in the contract to make it so it's prohibitive to bring him back. So they were willing to lose him if they if they needed to. But that's what it seemed like. It seemed like they wanted to save some money and not commit to him so they would sign an offer sheet because the way the NBA CBA works out, you're the team that drafts you has the ability to pay you more money than the yes. teams that are in free agency. So that's, I mean, it's a risky game to play with DeAndre Ayton, who I think is a much more valuable asset than he's being treated right now. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, I was, I was watching, I was watching golf when you were playing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing about what Dominique was saying though, right? Like, oh God. The Pacers, interestingly enough, Alabaster, like an NBA nerd, you may appreciate this. The Pacers didn't involve any poison pills. They didn't do anything creative. It was a very clean offer sheet. That's the term of art, right? It's just a four-year straight-up max contract. So there was nothing to dissuade the Suns from picking it up, and they apparently did so within, like, three seconds. And so what this does big picture now is, yes, Suns and Aiden, that is a brewing divorce that's just going to take longer to disentangle. And also... More immediately, the Suns are out of the Kevin Durant sweep sticks because DeAndre Aiden, everybody believes, had to be in that package, whether the Nets wanted or not, honestly. But that was always presumed to be a key part of it. And now he can't be because he just signed this deal. I feel you trying to pivot towards Kevin Durant, the more famous, more interesting part <laughs> of the story. And that is good hosting. But I'm going to do the opposite of good hosting and steer us into an issue that only I care about. Are there rules or is there a just like an unwritten understanding between teams to not do this? Because I remember restrictive free agency in the NFL, it was it was like an epidemic at one point where they were putting in poison pills where it was like, all right, if you play more than three home games in Minnesota, then you get a $10 million <laughs> balloon payment, in which yes. case then, then the Vikings can't match that deal. I'm just shocked. Did the... Did Indy ever really want them? Well, is that's this, that's the yeah. logical Or did somebody question. did somebody in Indy are they like friends with uh with uh the Suns or J was James Jones, right? The Suns GM. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. I got you. Next time I need a bootleg <laughs> uh, offer sheet, <laughs> holla at me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean in the NBA, we've certainly seen many poison pills. The balloon payment, where basically, and for those who don't know, it's basically like the last year of your contract is the biggest salary number by far, such that the whole thing basically becomes uh a a, a contract that's way more damaging to acquire um if you sign up for those terms. But in this case, yeah, I mean the Pacers, David, it honestly felt like they wanted to say to their fan base, we tried. tried. <laughs> <laughs> which is so sad i think wendy said this morning on um first take when i was with him on there that this was the fastest um reply to offer sheet in history so like <laughs> it seems so obvious that the sun's like i think he said it was like three minutes did they even have right, time yeah. to read was it a contract did they already know like it's okay i'm They're sorry just we command f a bunch of things yeah we command can, f poison think, no we can it. steer back to durant if you want to i just no, I, think, I, I needed before, to get that I off my chest before before we go to Durant, I think we should do the Indiana Pacers roster one through fifteen um, and their cap cap thing. Let's make it. Let's make some I like, real, real good. I like that. Right I like that. I said I'm gonna go boring, and you was like, nah, hold my let's beer. Go, yeah, let's, let's, go, let's go through their their whole entire cap uh, situation. Let's see who oh, their no, sixth man's gonna be. There's no please. Know. Yeah, no please. Yeah. Are you? Are you are you really allowing me to talk about Chris Duarte and Buddy Heald and <laughs> Miles Turner and Jalen Smith? David Dennis, you are Close speaking my love door. language. Hey, breakout year for Halliburton coming up, guys. Mm. So Kevin Actually, Durant um, can no longer go to the Phoenix Suns, it would appear. Because they can't trade DeAndre Ayton until what, like after January or something? January 15th, yes. Yeah, so... Uh, Thank you for being on your golf app when I said that earlier. I see. <laughs> so they can't God they can't it. they are out of the sweepstakes what that does to the market uh it either forces kevin durant to stay or makes him a lot cheaper than we thought he was going to be elsewhere because if there is no more competition because i think phoenix was like the betting favorite 
right? They were. The, they were. The they were. Match. I mean, the and... Heat are lingering vaguely. I mean, Alabaster, like what I see in the Kevin Durant trades landscape right now is just a holding pattern. Like the word is that everybody who was making offers for Kevin Durant realized that they were not actually going to have to outbid each other because the line for an acceptable bid was so high above what they wanted to give up that we're just sort of like the conventional wisdom right now. I don't know what the betting markets are saying in Vegas, but the conventional wisdom is he's just going to start the season as a net at this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think, I do think it's worth noting that the NBA trade deadline is in February. So it is still possible that Kevin Durant to Phoenix could happen in, in, in a bit. But what I think is fascinating about this, first of all, Heat fans, Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero are not getting you Kevin Durant. I'm sorry to say that. It's not going to happen. But normally the NBA, we call it a Stars League. We talk about the people who dictate the terms. Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Those are our protagonists. We never see the DeAndre Ayton's checkmate Kevin Durant. That doesn't happen. And it happened yesterday. And the Pacers. It's like, this is like Littlefinger from Game of Thrones, a bit character actually affecting who ends up on the iron throne of this whole thing and it's great now we have kevin durant this is he's gonna be miserable this year or they're gonna be awesome and it's hysterical who has a better story than ayton really who has a more compelling story Ooh, that's Rome? quality that's, quality, it, quality um I wait, I think hold, on, right right hold on dominic is doing the thing or he was just eating a bag of chips like a I'm pelican back. just like okay thank you i'm back i was saying that there was some quality wind horse thing right there where you ask a question and then we all wait like you're gonna a, give us an answer but you don't it was a, it was a, it was, <laughs> I, it was a game it was a game of thrones quote that's what i was doing i was just oh, doing game of thrones which I, clearly clearly yeah yeah, on the, on yeah, the, it, was. yeah. I, it was i chose violence it's the only one i remember that's the one yeah we're, we're doing yeah i've i've um <laughs> i've mentioned my love of wrestling and game of thrones clearly you see why when i go out in the streets the ladies are uh, <laughs> <laughs> are challenging me in my marriage <laughs> <laughs> they are sending you offer sheets left and right right <laughs> right, right where me, my agent is just slapping offer sheets away and, um, <laughs> So, and, uh, but wait, hold on. Like that's the, the smallest league domino. The, <laughs> the, the smallest domino to start this off-season Rube Goldberg machine is a little bit different. I guess it's kind of fun, but I don't know. I kind of like when the first big move happens and then there's a flurry of other moves afterwards. I don't feel like this is going to lead to a flurry of moves. It just leads to like a shifting of dynamics, which is like, okay, uh, fine. Yeah, it's like remember and, remember that show. Uh, I'll get a reference to another show, David Dennis, um, Wife Swap, where it was like <laughs> we're gonna see what it's like when your moms change each other, and one mom loves to put her food in like Tupperware, and one mom yeah. doesn't. Like this is the opposite. This is just like everybody figure your shit out at home. <laughs> like you're stuck. Like figure it out. Figure it out. And I mean, so Kevin Durant, like that's the palace intrigue. Is just like is he gonna not play or is he gonna play? That's the question now in Brooklyn. Or are they gonna trade him? I think he's going to play. I mean, I don't I, – I, this whole time I have not seen a world in which Kevin Durant, who wants to climb – well, he first of all, he just loves basketball. But he also wants to climb all the greatest lists and the scoring lists and get all these accolades. And he's got a few – who knows how long he has left. I just don't see a world where Kevin Durant pulls a Kyrie Irving that says he's not going to play. I think he's going to play with whatever team he's on at the beginning of the season. By the way, every opinion from David Dennis should be seen as a surrogate opinion for Steph Curry. In the way that Dominique is the opposite, I want this aggregated as if Steph Curry is saying all of that. Yes. Wife swap. Uh, exactly. We should show. do that. I mean, it's like repetitive. Like Great the point show. of wife swap was, had they ever had a wife swap where people were happier at the new house? Because like <laughs> they, every episode was they the same. that way? Where they yeah, just finalized every episode, the permanent? Every, yeah. Or they don't have to stay that way. Just when they go back home, it's like, Damn, it was better. Like every time they come back home, they're like, "Man, I know that was different. I know you guys used to get on my nerves, but I sure am happy to be back. I want somebody to come back and look their kids in the face, like them other kids. They were better kids. <laughs> See, that's that's what I, that's what I need. Like I need this from all my dating shows. Yeah. I need kids involved. I need stakes. Like you watch what's the Netflix show where they spend a couple weeks with each ultimatum. They're like twenty three years old. Yeah. Blow up your life. Who cares? I want somebody to be like, I was on an island for six weeks. With strangers, Timmy, you have a new dad. Like that's what I want from my from my dating shows. I want kids involved. And I want real real lives to be real. Lives. I want some stakes. Oh, man, you get a little get a little sunshine. And you ain't never coming home, Harlem Knights. Right. That's 
that's yeah, there you go. Okay, maybe I should say the name of the of the. No, you don't have to. But I knew Pablo wasn't going to get it, whether I said it or not. So I said it for the podcast audience, my favorite audience. Thank you. That's uh, with a K. Harlem Knights with a K, right? Knights. <laughs> <laughs> about them traveling back in time yeah that king no, arthur's court that that was eddie murphy remember, as king arthur you remember um, it's, a, it's a spinoff of jedi Knight. <laughs> do you oh, remember um yeah. martin lawrence had a movie called black knight do you remember oh, that yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Great movie. i think that's what i was thinking of honestly non-racistly was definitely oh, thinking about it in my mind oh man i never <laughs> saw that movie went, but it just sounds like went a... back in time to medieval times he was wearing a jet jersey and he went back in time to medieval times. that's such a ridiculous premise like any any time travel movie with black people in it it's real hard it's real hard it's hard to pull off to suspend disbelief dude like, i feel this you can only I... go back you can okay. only go back in time like 10 years or it's no, oh, real we weird. So we, we need, uh, this is, this is an uncomfortable discussion, but it's important and I'm glad we're having it <laughs> when a lot of movies are very progressive or they want to be. And so they put people of races that were explicitly of a lower caste into a higher caste as if everyone was just cool with it in medieval yeah. times or in like feudal society, wherever it's just like, guys, who I are think- you fool it? Who no, I think here? no, I think this is a two America situation in that everyone on here now are like liberal minded minorities who live in a world where you have to think of these things all the time. But I think that there's probably a large segment of society that go to these movies and have no problem accepting them as like real possibilities and, and, and never cross their mind that this is too outrageous for me to accept because I can't, I didn't see Black Knight because I was like, I can't watch that. That don't make no sense to me. Like I, I, I'll go watch Jurassic Park and, and be like, yeah, I will, I will go watch Marvel movies and be like, yeah, you know what? Thanos, that's a real thing, but I can't watch Black Knight. That's, a, you know, that's, that's how I felt about, I, I re, I've been uh, on a Star Wars binge again, um, me. And so I watched the Han Solo and mm-hmm. the Han Solo movie, and I can oh. believe the lightsabers, I can believe the force, but you are not going to convince me that Donald Glover grows up to be Billy D. Williams. Like there is no <laughs> world, no, where, no. Okay. Where, like, now I don't know. I don't know as a surrogate for Donald Glover where I'm supposed to weigh in on this. Am I offended that he can't be Billy D. Williams? Am I supposed to be in favor of him being Billy D. Williams? I don't know. We don't have to talk about that. We just talk about the fact that only people like us would acknowledge that that is unbelievable everyone else is like "Ooh, they found him he looked just like <laughs> I'm sorry okay. alabaster sorry i've been uh really distracted i've been on the wife swap wikipedia page for the last like six <laughs> minutes and i was trying to think of the best espn wife swap and i think i think we have it it's Stephen a hosting around the horn cutting people off and muting oh. them with the to yell over it and reality giving very nuanced nice conversational points on first About date empathy. against mad dog yeah oh my gosh how do we make this happen like i i am willing to march in the streets for black lives mattering <laughs> and for this to happen that's it Look, nothing just, else there is nothing else I that just, rises to this level <laughs> Somebody who's who's just just started around the horn. The idea of Stephen A. Smith yelling at me is probably like, well, I'm trying to get, well, I'm nervous and trying to get a 30 second point up. It's probably the most quiet thing. Quiet. That new, new, new them. <laughs> now look at here. I need you to understand one thing. I will not have you blaspheming against that bad man, Aaron or David Dennis. Stay off the weed. <laughs> And your sing. job no no you're not allowed <laughs> you can't do that not about right. okay about you can't, not yeah, yeah. you're not allowed to do Stephen a impersonations this is what um, I said all right guys let's the other let's day. move on to donovan <laughs> mitchell that. before pablo gets fired and <laughs> you can only do donald glover and billy <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right guys um there are reports <laughs> that the knicks have backed off a trade demand from the Jazz who asked for six first round picks, Obi Toppin, and a poo poo platter of assets for Donovan Mitchell. But it seems like this deal is rolling on. And my question to you does it feel inevitable that the Knicks will overpay to get Donovan Mitchell? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, the Knicks have all of these assets, all of these picks, and Danny Ainge. Like, what's happening in Utah, the Brian Windhorst thing? Like, we know what's happening now. Danny Ainge is sitting there with a star player. Right. He's not the star player that I personally think is a great fit for New York. 
Um, I think he's kind of overrated as a player, honestly. But the fact is, Danny Ainge smells a sucker. And the question is, are the Knicks still a sucker? And the answer to that question is biologically yes. <laughs> I um, I got hung up on poo poo platter. Because, uh, yes, I'm, yeah, I'm with that. I mean, yeah. we keep yeah. using that. Are, are we going P U P U? Because it's not necessary. Like that's not a bad thing. A poo poo platter, like the suggestion oh. that they're talking about poop, like poo poo. Mm. But that's not a, mm-hmm. an actual poo poo platter is good. So I'm going to need delicious. you guys you know, to, to, to be honest. Like, are we talking about dookie platters? Doo doo platters? Or are we talking okay. about actual? But we're, we're talking about manual quickly. Platters. Obi Toppin and Miles McBride. <laughs> Those are all good things. Those but, are like, ooh, but, I'll, have a t- I'll have a taste of some ooh, Obi Toppin on my, on ooh, my not an know, entree. plate. But you throw an RJ Barrett in there. That's a literal dookie platter. <laughs> <laughs> We need a we need a, a Knicks scale that we need to do. We need to figure out where you know okay. what Knicks elevate. Power this. ranking, oh, oh, oh. yes. Power <laughs> ranking Chinese food appetizers. Number one, in honor of Stephen A. Smith and my uh, nascent heart disease, is clearly crab rangoon and things of that nature. I'm taking that number one overall. I'm trying to think. Like I don't really get the appetizer. So like it's like shrimp toast. We're talking about not actual Chinese food. We're talking about food. From yeah, American Americanized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You just threw out a like a, an actual um, like Chinese food dish that's not on an appetizer menu. Shrimp toast is on an appetizer menu. Not at the American Chinese food restaurants, mm, really? You guys are no. no. That's way too high. I got. I got. No, high no, high no, no, no. Right I got. I got a confession to make right now. You're bougie on us right now. I'm I not agree. getting bougie. I, Dominique Foxworth, when I was 14 years old worked at dragon house express in the mall food court in owings mills what? maryland which was not a fancy restaurant and we had shrimp toast that's the only reason why i remember it because i would not order wait. shrimp toast anywhere else because it obviously is like bad shrimp because why else would you like blend it all up and put it on toast and fry it like don't nobody would eat that We've been, Dominique and I have done over 100 shows of fake television, and this is the first time he has revealed that he once worked in an Asian American restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, <laughs> it was fun. Uh, Miss Judy you're, you're... was my supervisor, and I used, mm. to, I used to give my, my man down at Electronic Boutique, which was like the video game store. Uh, uh-huh. I got to be honest. I'm generally an upstanding, ethical human being, but when Electronic Boutique guy came up there, I gave him his money back because I knew when I went back downstairs, he was going to give me that discount. Oh, that that platter was full of poo poo. Oh, so much so, poo poo on that platter. So wait, so so um, Dominique was working at a at a Chinese restaurant, and Pablo was working on his uh, Harlem Nights impersonations at the same time. It's like, <laughs> you're doing all the white <laughs> Oh, we were, the, it was it was all about the wipe swap that you get along the way. That was bu- that was before uh, people found out I was good at football. Then all summers were as spent at football camps. No longer. Wow. The sliding doors right. experience, Alabaster, where Dominique Foxworth is is uh, a Chinese food of- magnet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I would have taken over Miss Judy. She was great. <laughs> as as much as I was offended by you putting crab rangoon above uh, soup dumplings, I do think we should talk about Donovan Mitchell. Because so, dumplings. so so crab rangoon way better than dumplings. Um, way soup and otherwise, than um, soup dumplings. I once had a friend eat a soup dumpling, not realizing it was a normal dumpling, and just exploded in his mouth. Just like soup everywhere. It was disgusting. Um, which is kind of like what the Knicks are <laughs> trying to avoid. Um, Please, yeah, let's let's. Okay, uh, I just that one was one the time easiest of segues. One time, I just want like I need someone to like develop the science that allows what's happening in, in Pablo's head to be projected on the screen. I just want to watch it because I sincerely believe that he starts talking before he has a thought. And then the thought comes out. Like, I think that Pablo is so smart that talking is boring and life is just boring. So he's, he's like, you know what? I'm never going to know the end of the sentence when I start the sentence because that's how I get a thrill. Because every time he he decided that he was going to say that Nick segue before he knew that that Nick segue was going to work. And this time, oh, 
I freaking love you, Joe. He, Pass, Pablo. He, has, I, I'm a, he, uh, he starts a, he starts um, an analogy like the Knicks start trade negotiations with no plan whatsoever. <laughs> and the next thing you know, eight draft picks are falling out of your mouth. <laughs> you have a shooting guard that like you have it. no clue what to do with, he and just, you have no future. He's just and out he just, here. He just Pablo is just out here, here. Just out here signing to his brain's offer sheet without even reading. He's like, yes. <laughs> no, guys, I'm a. I'm a take precog. I just know <laughs> the take before anyone else does, and I just see it before. You know, Minority Report, also a good name for this yes, show. Um, so what are the Knicks doing? <laughs> Eight first-round picks, four of them their own, the other four protected picks. Like, they're trying to bring the price down because the offer Alabaster, you got a card here before. It was six first-rounders, plus a poo-poo platter full of delicious crab rangoon and other delectable Chinese delicacies for one guy. And the Knicks are like, look, it's us or the Heat. We think there is a bluff happening where Danny Ainge is trying to, he's trying to take our shirt from off our back while we're still wearing it. So they're trying to show discipline. I just think it's only a matter of time before they give in because they know, everybody knows, as almost as much as we knew that Jalen Brunson was going to be a Nick, that you Donovan Mitchell is going to be a Nick. You can't do a deal with uh, Danny Ainge right now. To me, it feels like, Danny Ainge is the guy in the high school that got a bad rap. Like you, you, you cheated on the prom queen and now all the rest of the girls in the school, they, you, you got to cool off. You can't be the next one. So right now he did such a good deal with, uh, Go with the Minnesota Timberwolves that everyone else is looking around like he ain't going to play me like that. So I, <laughs> I don't, I don't imagine as good as that deal was, there was the, the reaction to it backfired. I don't think that he's going to get as much as he thinks he can. He's going to have to move off of Donovan Mitchell for less than he did Rudy Gobert, just because of simple pride reasons, because you're not going <laughs> to roast me on ESPN all week. Well, why, why, is he, why are we getting off of Donovan Mitchell for draft picks that could potentially be the next Donovan Mitchell? Like, you have – like, why, why are we even doing this? I understand Gobert and Mitchell – we're going to a dead end. You got rid of Gobert. You got some picks. Why are we doing, like, what is the point of, of even doing this? And I'll go a step further. And, like, if we're going to complain about the Kevin Durant's and the Kyrie Irving's, like, getting out of their contracts, we also got to complain about these these teams who are shipping young cores who are under contract, right, and, and rebuilding when there's really no reason to. Well, I think what's happening is that I mean, a couple of things are happening, Alabaster. You'll have real NBA reasons. But for me, it just kind of feels like everybody's been reading the news and they're like, oh, this planet's going to explode by 2030, 2027. If we're <laughs> if we're a little bit if we're a little bit unlucky here and they're so, like, we're not going to even be alive. Why are we hoarding first rounders in 2028? Well, that's a good take. Um, I do think it's worth <laughs> noting that uh, they aren't actively shopping him. They're listening to offers for this oh, because God. it's like, why not? Um, but they aren't. Can doing I? Can the... I wait? Are you really buying that? No. Yes. Yeah, no. I think that they have leverage in the situation. They can hold on to him as long as they want. This is a 25 year old guy who averaged 26 five over the are last you, two years. Are you being paid they don't need to trade him by the start Ainge, of the season? Alabaster? He is. He is. He's on the Danny Ainge payroll. There's no way. Danny that... Ainge. Danny Ainge is a walking Lauren Hill concert ticket. Like, <laughs> oh, could you no, you can't buy the Lauren Hill concert ticket and be upset that you waited three hours to see yeah. Lauren Hill perform <laughs> at this point. You know what you're getting into. You are buying the concert ticket. And next thing you know, you have no draft picks. Yeah. Like, do not believe the thing that Danny Angel. If this conversation is happening, they are shopping Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Lauren Hill concert ticket is also a lottery ticket. It's like, maybe you win. Maybe you lose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw Lord Hill perform recently. A, con a ticket that my wife was really excited that I got, but a ticket that I did not pay for because I knew uh, she might not show up. Wait, so I, so qu quick question about Lauren Hill in 2022. Is she playing the hits or what's she what's she playing? Yeah, she ain't playing nothing new. She uh, she did like a little freestyle that was new. I enjoyed that, but it, it was all miseducation, just jamming mm -hmm. a little little Fuji lie. It was it was it was pretty good. I liked it. That's that's the best version of that. As much as she may never show up, um, um, the Danny Ainge yeah. thing. Yeah, Danny Dominique. Ainge. Danny Ainge. Yeah. Dominique. I, got I just Ainge have takes. a okay. I just have a hard time believing that the guy who is clearly tanking right. is going to jeopardize the tank. So that's and maybe my... Donovan Mitchell's too good or not good enough. But 
I think he jeopardizes the tank. That's my point to um, Alabaster's point. It's the same thing as that. Um, if we're going to talk about my man, Victor Wimbanyama. Mm -hmm. He's so which, good at pronouncing that. Man. Yeah, I've been practicing, man. I can't have you laughing at me. Um, if we're going <laughs> to be talking about him as the next guy, which is how we talk about it. And we're normally right in basketball. It's so rare. Like, it's not like how we do in football with quarterbacks where, like, it's 50-50. If we say he's the next guy, if he's actually next guy. Like, basketball players, we tend to know. And they're saying that he's the next guy, best guy since LeBron. Danny Ainge got to get up off of, got to get up off of Donovan Mitchell if he's trying to be in this sweepstakes. One because he needs the picks for next year, and two because Donovan Mitchell might get them out of lottery range. He might get them to the playoffs. I, I feel like they've been in the playoffs last at least the last two years. They've been in the playoffs. So uh, keeping Donovan, what, Mitchell, Donovan row, Mitchell around like is like, I, I mean, I guess that means you have until the trade deadline. Hopefully, you don't get hot because then it's real hard to trade him. But it, it seems like it hurts him more to keep him around and it helps. Alabaster, so, you can weigh in. We've insulted you comprehensively. That's right. You have. Uh, first of all, worth <laughs> noting the Jazz have made the playoffs for the last six years. There we um, go. Second point, you know, there are multiple ways to tank. And keeping Donovan Mitchell does not prohibit them from taking. They can it, offload yeah. Mike Conley, Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, he can get a mysterious hamstring injury in All October fair. and miss two weeks. We've seen this, this happen before. But I'm sorry. But I'm my sorry, only point about let me, cut you off, let me cut you off. Let me cut you off sorry. real quick. Let me cut you off real quick. The problem with that is, though, <clears throat> because they've tried to dis discourage tanking, they flattened out some of the odds. So the way that you can improve your odds is to get more picks. The longer you keep Donovan Mitchell, the fewer picks you can have. So, like, even if they win a bunch, getting rid of if they get rid of Donovan Mitchell and win a bunch, they still have more picks, which increases your chances. So, like, that's my point. The time is not on oh, their side. Definitely. I just think that, like, the thing with the thing with Ainge is he has leverage in this situation where if he doesn't get an overwhelming offer, Donovan Mitchell is a 25-year-old who's still really good, who's on a, you know, he's on the eight and max. He's on the fun max, as Zach Lowe calls it. And in February, people are going to want him. Next year before the draft, people are going to want him. Uh, at any point, like he, he is someone who's not a depreciating asset at this point, And it's not a situation that's toxic. This is not Kyrie in Brooklyn. This is not, you know, Carmelo, his last year in Denver. Uh, he could just go and light it up. They could lose a bunch of games. They could trade him in three months. That's Danny Age's leverage. So okay. that leverage does exist. I think the countervailing force though, and Dominique said this before, and I get why he said it, but I just don't think it applies here. He said that pride is the reason why you wouldn't overpay for down to Mitchell right now. Counting on pride from the New York Knicks. <laughs> like I no, no, they, I mean, what they want to do, what they want to do is win a press conference. And, and that's, that a, that's, that's the point. They may not win the press conference. That's the point. You may not win the press conference and pride is there are very few general managers who we know or like team guys who run teams that we know. We know the Knicks guys. They are not guys who want to have hanging around their neck that Danny Ainge, of all people, fleece them a couple weeks after fleecing uh, Tim Connolly, whose name we really didn't talk about until he got fleeced by Danny Ainge. And I guess he got that job that people were surprised that he got ownership in the team or something, right? Yes, 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 yes. He was the guy who drafted Jokic, and now he's the guy who got fleeced by Danny Ainge. That is a fair <laughs> exactly. point. A fair point. Yeah, the, the, the Knicks are like, this is a championship move but the Knicks are nowhere near a championship. <laughs> like, that's the problem. Like, the Wolves made their move thinking that they are closer to some sort of champ. Like, that's what you do. You get you trade everything for Kawhi and Paul George for championship. You do that for AD for championship. The Knicks are – Donovan Mitchell does not bring the Knicks close to a championship. It brings them closer to the play-in tournament, which – there's no reason to trade picks when you when you're doing that. No, and and the Donovan Mitchell aspect of this, right? Like, okay, there's the other buyer, Alabaster, that's in the marketplace, and that's the Miami Heat. And so, to me, where the story goes next, we have the Knicks doing a modicum of the prideful thing that Dominique just suggested. In fairness to his observation, right? They said no, <laughs> we don't want six first rounders out of our system for Donovan Mitchell, plus the poo poo platter of delicious cream cheese filled appetizers. They said no. And now I think the next story is, well, what are the Heat going to offer? How serious are they? And are they going to meet Danny Ainge's asking price, which again is going to be, yeah, crazy high. The problem with the Heat is they're really well run. And 
Pat Riley's really old. And so he's not going to be tanking. And he's unbelievable at making his picks pretty much worthless. And that really submarines their offer. But what I have a question for all of you guys. I think like the entire context of the Donovan Mitchell discussion we've had over the last few days is these offers are all overpays for him. What is the right amount of picks for a 25 year old? Who's this good? Is it three unprotected first round pick? Is it two and a young player? Where, where does it fall for it actually being fair? Well, listen, like we are, we're an inflationary period in America. Like a dollar today is not a dollar 10 years ago. A first rounder today is not a first rounder 10 years ago. And there are many reasons for that. Zach Lowe had a great piece about that. <clears throat> Yesterday's price is not today's price. Had to be said. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm, I, I, that was, I can't believe I, I missed the fact. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was, that's, right. that's my that fault. That was WB Du Bois, I think. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare say Du Bois, Pablo. It's not pronounced Du Bois. I know you seem like the type that would try to put that French spin on it. Du Bois. And I like a, a crook. Croissant, 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 Dubois, croissant. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, first round picks, right. Okay, so what's a fair price for Donovan Mitchell, right? Like Rudy Gobert, everybody agrees. Four first rounders is insane, right? Everybody agrees with that. Um, the problem is that that's now the market price. Um, the market price in the NBA is weird because it's literally just like the last guy who did something. And so is that an irrational actor, a buyer and a seller? It's hard to say, but that's how the market price is interpreted. Back in the day, like, what did Kawhi Leonard get? You know, I mean, again, there are contracts left on Donovan Mitchell's contract here, years left on his contract. Right. But I would say I would feel very bad giving up four first rounders for Donovan Mitchell. I would have felt very bad giving up three plus players. But I have a hard time believing you're going to get Donovan Mitchell for anything less than four at this point. I think, that... I think it depends on where you are, though. Like, like the if I'm the if I were if the Lakers had that right to give, and that was going to get them to a championship, I would say do it. Give all the picks, get the guy for the championship. Net, like if you are a, a friend, like the, if the Heat have that, you do that. I think that there is no price that... too large for the Heat to get down to Mitchell because that he is going to get them to a championship with what they have. The Knicks, again, sorry are nowhere near a championship. <laughs> so like you are giving all of this stuff out. You are you are taking over an exorbitant loan for a Ferrari to park in front of your shack. Like yeah. that's the I problem. think that's the it's variable pricing. It's hard to put a price tag on any NBA player of that caliber because it depends on what he means to you and that's in uh your your like championship run. Uh, where you are in that window I think determines how valuable that player is which is why i think the heat like to your point should be aggressive why i think if the warriors actually could get kevin durant they should pack up all the players that anybody is asking for and send them to brooklyn because these are players that added to what the team already has like almost guarantees or at least in the finals i feel like the next championship window is that uh tunnel that wiley coyote used to run into in Looney Tunes, <laughs> like it's not actually, it's painted onto a brick wall. For the for the Knicks or the Nets or both? For the for the Knicks specifically, but possibly okay. now, unfortunately, for the Nets, Alabaster. So one thing I think is funny in the heat of all of this is in 2013, Pat Riley told Danny Ainge or said about Danny Ainge, yeah. Danny Ainge needs to shut the f up and manage his own team. One of the great. He was the biggest quotes. whiner going when he was playing, and I know that because I coached against him. They definitely don't like each other. And I have one more other quote that I, I need to read you. Ainge couldn't let it go with that. This is from Kevin Arnovitz in 2013. Ainge couldn't let it go with that one final shot at Riley. I don't want to mess up his Armani suits and all of that hair goop. It would be way too expensive for me. That's not, they're not going to have a deal unless Danny Ainge gets exactly what he wants. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That does that's just, that's that doesn't just guys, that's just guys just just guys being guys. <laughs> <laughs> Some old locker room talk. <laughs> yeah, that's old that's old like, Romani suits, like yeah. that hair, whatever. They'll 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 work it out. They'll come to the table and figure things out. You know. I mean, and this is again, speaking to the minority experience, most of the things I've purchased in my life I bought from people I don't like. So <laughs> I don't see why. 
Pat Riley's rich white ass <laughs> can't get comfortable with purchasing something. I guess purchasing is definitely the wrong word in this context. Good with, catch. With giving uh, the proper compensation for a complete human being who is not being traded around <laughs> like, um, like, an uh, like, like capital. <laughs> <laughs> who is not a machine in a factory. Damn. I would have liked to see Dominique organize the labor force at the Chinese restaurant that he worked at. Oh, man. It, it yeah, I mean, look, look, the, the, the entire history of America is built on rich white guys solving their issues and coming to the table and figuring out where to move black people. So I think that we can... Uh, <laughs> I, I think that, uh, that they can, <laughs> Riley, Riley and Ames uh, can, can work that out. We got. To, I was so close to being invited for another show. I, I, I had to take. A, that's all right. I, I, I mean, a break after after uh, Glizzy last time, and now I, really <laughs> I feel like <laughs> there has to be something. And Pablo would have said Louisiana Purchase without knowing the rest of the analogy. <laughs> but like, there is something with the louisiana purchase like we got win by yama from france we got the louisiana purchase mm. which was purchased under crisis for much less than it was worth like there's a lot of stuff there that pablo can work on and i feel like a minute and a half is not enough time to figure it out no i was like is it like a thomas jefferson joke like what am i doing here? just just start talking and i'm sure it'll make sense by the end of it i'm sure i'm sure it'll <laughs> <laughs> alabaster's alabaster hands moved at a speed that um rendered it a blur so alabaster what would you like me to not talk about uh, hey director bill can you cut the clock to 10 seconds oh come on <laughs> come on how much damage could i do with a louisiana purchase starting point in an analogy i can't do that much damage i do want to i do want to leave you with james harden's quote from that wonderful article that uh about his off season where he said being focused is boring and it's really words to live by mm. being focused is boring yes i respect that honestly yes yeah i was like is louisiana purchase a strip club that james harden likes <laughs> it might it might actually be one already Oh, thank you, Corona. Thank you so much. <laughs> there it is. The Dominique Foxworth Memorial Confetti. We did it.